Hi friends, you are watching Engineering Made Easy. I am Lalit Vasist. In this video, we will discuss the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. For this, we will use this simulator. And with the help of this simulator, we will understand all the basics of the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. So let's start. First of all, the main thing is what is Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction? It is given as, if I see the formula, then it is given as the induced EMF E is given as E is equals to minus of N d phi by dt. I will explain all these terms d phi by dt. Okay, what does this mean? Here E is the electromotive force. Okay, EMF induced EMF is equals to minus of N d phi by dt. Phi is the flux okay magnetic flux and n is the number of turns in the coil so what does this rule says actually according to this the electromotive force around a closed path is equal to the negative of the time rate of change of the magnetic flux enclosed by the path it means if we see it by this example then here we have uh, this voltmeter and uh, this is the coil okay and here is the bar magnet so what will i do i will change the position of this bar magnet okay and we'll see how it produces the induced emf in this and uh, how this bulb lightens so this is the faraday's law of electromagnetic inductions formula and uh, according to this the induced emf okay it depends on the the rate the rate of change of flux in this coil okay and also on the number of turns of the coil as the number of turns of this coil increases the induced emf increases not only this as the this rate d phi by dt means how the flux the magnetic flux is changing with respect to time if d phi by dt is more it means it is inducing more emf d phi by dt more means the change in flux is more with respect to time if i as uh, let me show you it by these lines these are the, the magnetic uh, field lines you see here is the bar magnet north pole and here is the south pole and all these lines are moving from uh, coming out from the north pole and entering into the south pole see the direction of these field lines magnetic field lines okay you can observe it they are making a closed loop okay so as i move this uh, bar magnet towards this uh, as you can see that uh, magnetic field lines are associated with this bar magnet and they are linked they are cut by this coil so if it is stationary this bar magnet is stationary or you can say there is no relative motion between these two there between this um, coil and bar magnet no voltage is induced okay but if i move it then you see there is a change so the change occurs only when there is a motion relative motion between this bar magnet and the coil okay so as i will increase the speed okay d phi by dt will increase because the rate of change of flux will increase so on moving it fast the there will be more deflection in this voltmeter the reading will be high the induced emf will be high so and if i induce uh, if i move it uh, slowly slowly then you see if i am in uh, moving it very slowly then you see this uh, voltmeter okay and the glow of this bulb it will be small you see it is there is little deviation okay but if I put it inside it and do not move it, so there is no relative uh, change. There is no change in flux. The flux is constant at this point. So change in flux with respect to time means I need to vary it. So let's move it. Whether I move it towards it. Okay, let's see from here. I am moving it towards this coil. So it is having deflection. If it is going away, then it is having deflection in the opposite direction if i am 
taking it back then it, again deflection and it is moving outward from the other side then there is deflection but at this point or if I put it at uh, this point or I put it at uh, this point whenever it is a stationary with respect to this coil no change in flux with respect to time so no deviation no glow of valve no voltmeter readings okay so this was the concept it also depends on the number of coils you see how it depends uh, let's take uh, another example uh, should i remove this uh, formula let's close it so you see here i'm removing these uh, field lines also for clarity you see i'm moving it uh, with the okay, same uh, speed towards the coil and here it has four turns and here only two turns as i told you that n d5 by dt so n is the number of turns it should be half actually in this case n is half of this only two turns so it should be low uh, let's keep the d5 by dt almost same manually i'm trying my best let's see okay this deflection and if i do this uh, same uh, with this then you see the deflection is more okay so in this case the deflection will be double of that if d5 by dt is same since n is double in here it is 4 here it is 2 only another observation so this was the related to n now let's see some other observations with this single uh, coil only see the direction of deflection here it is north pole towards its side and if i increase you see the deflection okay as i move this uh, uh, bar magnet towards this coil uh, one more thing that you should understand here that whether i move this magnet or the coil there is no difference there uh, the important thing is the relative position the, the relative uh, change in these positions of the magnet and uh, this coil okay uh, i can move i can uh, put this uh, bar magnet stationary and uh, can move this uh, coil also or i can move both of them but at least there should be one moving thing so that there uh, should be change in the flux d5 by dt another way can be if i put this uh, uh, magnet here uh, let's say it is uh, inside this and it is having a stationary uh, magnetic field so no change in flux so there is no glow or no voltage induced dmf but i have uh, this uh, bar magnet or i can say there is any source of magnetic field that is producing variable magnetic field in that case also uh, even there is no relative change in the positions of uh, these two but uh, it is having some time variable magnetic flux okay it is a source of a variable magnetic uh, field so in that case also there will be d5 by dt rate of change of flux will be present so emf will be induced in that case also now we were seeing the direction of the uh, deflection okay you observe it carefully uh, here it is the north pole uh, towards it i can change it from this this side i can put the south pole at this side but uh, let's again put north pole in this side now observe it if i will move it towards this uh, coil keeping north pole towards facing this uh, coil then you see what happens and the direction of this deflection the deflection direction is in left side you observed it and when i will move this uh, away from the other side then see the deflection initially it was uh, left here it is in right okay when it is moving away it is in right deflection let's uh, do the same experiment with the south pole okay south pole facing it here it is north now let's take south here the bar magnets pole i have reversed them now see initially the deflection was in left side when i was moving it towards it now see the deflection is in right side okay and uh, when i will move it away from it and see deflection would be in left side you observe deflection was in left side so on changing the direction of poles the deflection the emf induced direction is reversed okay and also it is uh, again reversed 
when we move it towards the coil or when we move it away uh, from the coil in that case also the direction is opposite okay so i hope you got all these points and understood how the emf induced depends on number of turns of the coil and the rate of change of magnetic flux that is minus n d phi by dt okay this is the induced emf and uh, you also observed the negative sign in the formula that is e equals to minus of n d phi by dt it is according to the lens law which says that if some emf is induced then this induced emf will cause current in some direction so this current will cause will again uh, produce the magnetic field and this magnetic field so, uh, field's direction will be such that that it will oppose original magnetic field that was responsible for its production okay listen these words carefully okay so i hope you got all these concepts we demonstrated all these things okay so i hope you liked the video please uh, click on the like button and share it with your friends if you found it useful and liked it and enjoyed it and do not forget to subscribe my channel engineering made easy for more such interesting and informative videos so thank you guys for watching this video till the end see you soon in the next video with such more informative videos thank you for watching bye bye